We're looking at section 9.3 in elementary statistics, talking about two means independent samples. Uh, so we're going to start off by looking at a very interesting problem on number 8. Uh, number 8 talks about do men talk less than women, which we obviously know is true, so I don't know why we're doing this, but we're, we're still going to go through this process of testing it. So talk about do men talk less than women. So the accompanying table gives results from the study of the world, words spoken in a day by men and women and the original data are in the data set 17 in appendix B and this was based on are women really more talkative than men uh, once again in a science journal volume 317 uh, article number 5834 we're going to use a 0 0.01 significance level to test the claim that the mean number of words spoken in a day by men are less than women. So we're going to use a significance level of 0 0.01 and we're testing the claim that the mean number of words spoken by men is less than women. Okay, I kind of ran over my paper there. Uh, once again, it's just kind of rephrasing what the book has there. Uh, we don't necessarily have to put this on. We just want to have that significance level kind of noted so we don't forget about that. Uh, considering on here that in, the, in this table they talk about men and they talk about women, they state that men was our sample one. We had 186 men. Uh, we had a sample mean of... 15,668.5 uh, with a sample standard deviation of 8,632.5. Uh, then for women, uh, they talk about this being our second group, uh, out of 210 women that are polled here. Uh, we talk about the mean of these uh, sample was 16,215. Point zero, with a sample standard deviation of 7,301.5. Now there is nothing on here to state that we have a standard population standard deviations equal to each other. Um, so we are not going to make any assumptions on this. Um, we aren't going to make any assumptions that we even know the population standard deviation of how many words are spoken by people. Uh, overall with any of these groups men women so we, we have to think about this as just a regular comparing the means so our null hypothesis does the mean of the men equal the mean of the women overall and then our alternative hypothesis once again our null hypothesis is not our claim, so our claim has to be part of our alternative hypothesis. So we're going to talk about is the mean of men less than the mean of women. Okay. So we go to our calculator now. Once again, I said a lot of this is just going to be our calculator doing all the work for us. It's us being able to set up the problem and knowing what operations to go into. Okay, so we're going to go menu, statistics, uh, we're going to look at a stat test on here. Uh, in the stat test, um, we're going to go into a two sample. Okay, so notice we have our two sample Z test and then a two sample T test. Remember, Z is only used in our means, once again, kind of like our z-test and t-test there, that would have been our one population way back when I made you do those by hand. Yes, the calculator would have did it for you, but it was uh, more enjoyable for me to see you do it by hand. Um, we look at the two sample now, and we are going to have to choose the t-test on here because, once again, we don't know what sigmas are. Okay, we don't know the population standard deviations. Okay, Now it asks us, do we want to use data? or stats, okay? 
we don't have a list of data. We don't have data that needs to be entered and bring a list over. We're going to have to, we have our information already. So we're going to use our stats on here. Enter, okay. And then it asks us now to enter in our list of information. So if you notice, uh, we have our X bar one, sample standard deviation one, the number in sample one, two, standard deviation two, and then two. So basically we're just going to go through our list now. And we're just going to start entering in our data. So we have our first mean uh, was 15,668.5. Uh, sample standard deviation, 8632.5. And the number in the sample was 186. We're going to come down to our second mean right here of 16,215. We could type in the point zero, but it doesn't really matter. We're not worried about significant digits. It's on our reporting, not necessarily on our values in here are going to drop it anyway. Um, then we have 7301.5 and 210 once again for the women in here. Uh, we're going to come down here and we then we have our alternative hypothesis. Okay, so if we're seeing our, our alternative hypothesis, I wish this was an easier way I could show you um, how this is working, but we have our alternative hypothesis. Um, Notice they have H sub A, we use H sub 1, once again just kind of discrepancy in the problem itself and the notations. Uh, we're looking to have our first mean be smaller than because we want men less than women. Men was part of our first one so that's what we're testing towards. Uh, so we're going to go mu 1 is less than mu 2. Uh, and then we have that selected in here now so mu 1 is less than mu 2. Uh, and then now we're going to run our stats. Uh, within here, we see that we come up with a test statistic T equals negative 0.675. Okay. Um, notice it did our degrees of freedom for us. It figured out our p-value. So we have our p-value is... 0.249, actually 0.24989 in here. Um, and, and this is kind of the information that we need on here. Um, we could always list our degrees of freedom. Uh, always good to know. Here they talk about 364.267, uh, but not necessarily in importance into precisely what we need to know in this problem. Um, so as we look at this now, we look at this p-value, we look at our significance, and boy, we most definitely are larger than this. We are not smaller. Um, so we fail to reject, okay, or we do not reject the null hypothesis. So we fail to reject the null hypothesis, okay? So that means that there is not sufficient evidence to support the claim that men speak less than women. So, gentlemen, this test kind of told us um, that we don't speak less than women, that women speak about as much as we do right here. Uh, once again, doesn't soundly say that they speak more than us, but it says that we do not speak less than them. Um, now, confidence interval. Okay, um, we can always do confidence intervals on things too within here. Uh, once again, looking for that equality on here uh, within this. So if we were to look at this confidence interval, we would look at that we would go once again to our statistics, confidence intervals, two sample T intervals, what we'd be looking at here, once again going with our stats, uh, because we have our stats given to us here. Uh, we'd have to re-go through and retype everything in. Um, this is one of the downfalls to having this, that so we just can't bring a list back in. Uh, which is nice at times. 
Uh, second one was 16,215. And then we had 7301.5. Uh, and then so once we have all this in, now we got to figure out, well, what type of confidence interval do we have? Okay, so remember that the confidence interval does rely on page 399. Uh, we have a significance level point. 0 0.01 and we have a one tail test uh, so this is a confidence level of 98 percent okay so then on this confidence level down here uh, we would type in 0.98 and then hit enter uh, we then would see that we would have 13,004, or sorry, 1,343.88, less than mu1 minus mu2. Oh, I wrote that backwards, ignore that, I'm looking at this wrong. A negative 2,436.88, less than or equal, less than mu1 minus mu2, less than 1,343.88, okay? So, once again, as we would look at the confidence intervals, we see that um, here zero appears. Okay, so that means we are showing signs that we do have an equality in here, even though overall we're seeing more negative numbers than higher numbers. We're seeing the lower portion of it, so there is some signs that they might speak a little bit less, but there's no proof towards that. Uh, so once again, this is that confidence interval that kind of goes into here, and, and we look for that zero that appears within it, okay? Now, our next problem, we're going to look at number 20. Okay, on number 20, they talk about radiation in baby teeth. Uh, it says, listed below are amounts of uh, strontium-90, uh, in a simple random sample of baby teeth obtained from Pennsylvania residents and New York residents born after 1979. Uh, we're going to use a 0 0.05 significance level to test the claim that the mean amount of strontium-90 from Pennsylvania residents is greater than the mean amount from New York. Okay, so we're looking at, once again, number 20. Okay, this pen's dying on me. So number 20, and we have a significance level of 0 0.05, and the claim is that the mean level of the strontium-90 in Pennsylvania residents is greater than New York. So I'm just going to go Penn is greater than New York, okay? Uh, you're just kind of abbreviating what's going on so I know when I do my hypothesis testing what's happening here. Now, on this one we have uh, some issues, okay? Uh, so what we're going to have to do is we're going to have to go to a new document. And no, we don't want to save anything. We're going to bring in a list and spreadsheet, okay? And then now we're going to type in our Pennsylvania or Penn or just uh, P or P-E-E, -E, sorry, P-E-N-N. -N. Uh, and then we're going to have our other one be our New York, so NY. Uh, because here they gave us a list of data. Okay, so they gave us a list of information um, based off of there. So we want our Pennsylvania and New York. And then we're going to go through and type in our data. Okay, once we typed in all our data, which I kind of paused the video and then went in and typed in all my data. So as you can see, I have my list of data in here um, overall. We see that we have our Pennsylvania, New York, we got 155, 142, 149, so on and so forth, Pennsylvania, 133, 140, 142, so on and so forth here. Uh, we type this in now. We could go through and figure out our sample mean, sample standard deviation, our total number, and take all the information over. But the nice part about this is we can just bring that list over. So basically we're going to have to bring in our calculator settings. So within our document, we're going to bring in our calculator app now. Okay, once we have that calculator app in here, um, we're going to be testing our claim. But we should write our claim first. So our null hypothesis, 
once again is mu1 equals mu2 so we have equality in here uh, our alternative once again the claim we want a Pennsylvania to be greater than New York and in my list I listed Pennsylvania first uh, so I'm just going to go like this and put a little pen above this and a little New York above this that way I know which is one which is two in my as I conclude back uh, so here we're going to be testing that mu1 is greater than mu2 okay now that we have this we're basically going to come into our uh, calculator now we're going to go menu statistics stat tests a two sample t-test once again nothing with that population standard deviation remember that's extremely rare to actually have that um, so we, we aren't going to assume anything in this case now I'm going to be selecting my data okay so you know so I'm going to leave that data in there um, because that's actually what we just typed into our list so I go data and notice what happens here now okay it, it's a little bit different okay it tells us that we have list one list two frequency of the list and then our alternative plus then pooled once again that pooled portion means if we're assuming that the sample populations are the same or not uh, within here in which then we're not assuming that the populations are so we're going to be not pooled uh, so we're going to enter in our Pennsylvania list for list one New York for list two and then I'm trying to get to where you can see it a little better there really is no nice way to do this um, then we're going to come down and in here we're going to have mu1 is greater than mu2 okay so mu1 is greater than mu2 that's what we're going to select and then pooled either you have yes or no once again we would use pooled if we were assuming that the standard deviation of one equals the standard deviation of two okay it is for the the populations now once again we can't assume this unless it's told that we can do this in which this problem doesn't have any notations towards the population standard deviations in here uh, so we're going to leave this as not pooled uh, and then we hit OK and we get our list of information so we see our test statistic T equals 3.265 um, we see that we have a p-value of 0.00243 um, and, and so degrees of freedom once again is at 15.99 uh, so we're talking 16 degrees of freedom in here that's relating towards once again that's not the biggest thing in here we're looking for these values right here um, given this piece of information, given what happened in the situation, we look at this p-value, we look at our significance level, um, and we are going to reject the null hypothesis. Okay, So because we reject the null hypothesis, there is sufficient evidence. So there is sufficient evidence to support the claim that uh, oh, that the amount of strontium 90 in Pennsylvania is higher than New York and once again if we were doing this on a test quiz or formality with it we would actually fully state everything that's happening with it. I'm just trying not to drag out the time once again because I have very poor handwriting a um, little hard to read on everything but we're just kind of getting that notation of we always want to state our answers within here um, realizing that within this we could also do a, a confidence level okay so uh, relating to our confidence level now um, so our confidence interval let's just go like this um, some of the things to be thinking about is once again we had a significance level of 0 0.05 
and we're talking greater than, our alternative is greater than, so we're one tail, okay? So we need to figure out what type of confidence do we have here. So if we have 0 0.05 and a one tail, we're talking about 90% confidence, okay? So if we come in here and we want to test towards 90% confidence, uh, we're going to use our menu, statistics, confidence intervals, and then our two sample interval. Once again, pulling our data in this. Okay, uh, We still have our list of Pennsylvania as the first one, New York as the second one. Uh, as we arrow down, you notice I'm down right here. This is uh, C level, so that talks about our confidence level. We want to be 0.90, so we want a 90% confidence, or 0.9. Once again, we're not pooled um, with this, so we enter this in, and we see that now we get a lower and upper confidence level, so we see that we have uh, our confidence level is 5.9. 196 is less than mu1 minus mu2 is less than 17.138 okay and looking at this in here once again zero is not included so we're showing that mu1 is larger than mu2 and once again by 5 to 17 uh, once again well, a label on this is, wow, millibequilos or MBQs per gram of calcium. Okay, so w the label in here would be MBQs per gram of calcium. Um, and so... If we think about this, I mean, this could be significant issues. It could not be significant issues. Uh, but that's where doctors would have to start ranging into, well, what's the importance of this? Is, is one better, one worse? Are there other issues? And this could possibly explain certain things uh, within people in Pennsylvania versus New York. Uh, but that's how we would do that confidence level. Once again, the calculator is doing all our work. If you notice... Most work in statistics is being able to collect the data and put the data together, then interpret the data, and then state our conclusion and basically do everything kind of as in a sound manner as possible, which is what we're looking at in these problems.